sides. Uh, we took the stick out of this one side so that we had a little more room in there, the control stick. Uh, they crammed them in. They weren't complaining at that point. They were happy to get out of there. You were decorated for that. I received the Distinguished Flying Cross for that, yes. Tell me something. When you were doing that, I mean, it's your job. You're a soldier. But still, did you calculate the odds? No. Well, you don't think about things like that. Uh, there were people in trouble, and uh, you had to go get them out. Uh, probably if I would have thought about the odds, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Operation Shiny Bayonet was prelude to the first major campaign in Vietnam. The battle for the Yadrang Valley lasted little more than a month. When it was over, 305 First Cavalry were dead, over 500 wounded. From that day forward, there was no question that winning the war in Vietnam would be neither swift nor easy. At that point, did you think the war would continue for as long as it did? Uh, after the Iodrang, I did. You did? I knew we were in for long haul. Why did you come to that conclusion? Well, it was the intensity of that particular battle. Before that battle, did you sense that the enemy was as determined as he turned out to be? Yes. I, I think we got an indication of that in the Shiny Bayonet. They're very tenacious fighters, they're very well trained. Uh, they're skilled at what they do, or what they did. Joe Balacci did one more tour in Vietnam and retired a colonel in 1977. When I got out of the army, I was wild. You were wild in the army. <laughs> <laughs> Last summer, some of the men of the 12th Cavalry held a reunion in Colorado. Many of them fought other battles, personal battles, since 1965. As they watched themselves almost four decades later, that afternoon in the highlands of Vietnam could have been yesterday. To send more men into the jungle was only to invite more casualties. So the battalion called for an artillery barrage to blanket the area, and the artillery men happily obliged. It was a tragic end to a tragic and hair-raising day. As we saw our UH-1D medical evacuation helicopter take one of the first rounds. And as dusk came and the artillery ceased, the snipers on the hillside came out of their tunnels for another night's work. Some of our group that we still keep in contact with have a rough time with the war. The rest of us, we stay pretty well close together yet. And the rest of us try to coach them, try to get them to come to these re military reunions with us. And it makes a lot of difference. There's been so much written about this war, and a lot of it highly critical. Uh, but what gets lost in that shuffle is that how the guys themselves performed was remarkable. 1965, 66, and into 67, I think you had an excellent trained army. And, and of course,